hello guys and namaste welcome to my channel so today we are going to work on the to do application and this is going to look somewhat like this so here you will have an option where you can add the task so something like this and when you add the task you will see it here you can mark it as completed and you can remove it so let's remove it like this so before we work on the code if you are new to my channel if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel yet please do i would really really appreciate that if you just subscribe to my channel so now let's work on the code all right so the very first thing is that we need to import libraries so for that what do we need we need first thing which is your tick enter that is a must then i want a message box so that if in case something goes wrong then in that case i can use the message box to display the information then i want to use ttk uh, because that is a modernized based tick enter so i want to use it so just to summarize uh, tick enter is basically your python built in library for creating web application message box is used for showing alert boxes like warnings or errors then your ttk is a themed widget set of tick enter that provides modern looking widgets all right now let's create the class so to create the class we will simply do class and then the name so i'll do to do app and then we will have an initialization method to initialize the arguments so it will look like this and then we will have root so this root property is your window basically which is uh, like your parent window for the application so i want to set a few properties on it so first is that you want to use this and then you have to set title geometry as in your size of that window and then if you want to have a background color or not so let's do self dot root dot title and here i'll say to do app then self dot root dot geometry and here the size that i want is 450 by 500 and then if you want to have a background then you can have it so i'm not going to use that so that's okay so this is your constructor basically where you have set up the initial configuration of the window now talking about style what do we need so first thing is that you need a style object so ttk dot style and then you need to configure this so how to configure basically you just call this method and here i want to have a label so t label and then i have to provide the font so i'll use font as helvetica size 18 and then i want it to be bold now if you want to have background and foreground colors then you can have it so we have background here so this is white color that i'm having as background and then we have somewhat dark gray color as foreground now let's create a button as well so self dot configure sorry self dot style dot configure and then let's copy this and instead of t label it would be t button and font size would be 12 i don't want it to be bold and then i want to have a padding so padding equals equals to 5 and then your background color has slightly darker green and the foreground color is black or you can even have it as white that's up to you so here we have configured a button and here we have configured a label now we are done with styling now talking about widgets uh, first is that you need another label so ttk.label 
and here I want to have the root window here so that I know that where exactly I am putting the label so this is root then text and here I'll say to do app and then I need to provide this style which is going to be your T label that you have created already and then I need to pack this up so self dot label dot pack and then padding only on uh, vertical side as 20 part will be more explainable when we see the application up and running okay so hold on to it so what we have done here is we have created a label with the text to do app and styled using the previously defined t label that we have here so this is positioned with some padding at the top which is your padding y now for button as well we need to do the same thing uh, almost same thing so self dot task entry frame so here I am creating a frame specifically where we have to enter the task so ttk dot frame and here the window name is going to be a root now here we need to provide the padding again so this would be self dot task entry frame dot padding sorry dot pack and then padding y equals to 10 all right now the actual field where you have to insert inside this frame so that field is going to be self dot task entry and it is going to be entry so this is where you actually insert or the user insert so self dot task entry frame so this is where you are placing it then we need to provide the width so let's go with 35 you can play around with it to dif to distinguish uh, what size do you want now font is going to be Helvetica and 12 now we need to pack this so self dot task entry dot pack and I'm going to uh, keep this option where you insert to the left and the button to the right so that is going to be done by this sorry task dot left and the padding I'm going to go with 10 here now we need to add the button so here what I'm doing is so when we have uh, input field here then beside this here I want to have a button right so left we have the input field right we have the button so we need to create a button here so self dot add button equals to ttk dot button and here I'll here I would do self dot task entry frame text equals to add task and then on this button I want to have an event so for this I'll use command so this function we will create later and then style equals to the button that we have already created here all right so what we have done till now we have created a frame so this frame widget is used to group the task entry and the add task button now the entry widget basically is a text field where users can type in task and then your task button which calls the add task method this one when clicked it is positioned next to the entry widget alrighty so now we have to work on the scroll bar where you actually display all the tasks which have been already inserted so I want to see all of them also the new one that I will insert right so for that I need a list box frame so list box frame ttk dot frame 
and here I'll just say root now I need to pack this so self dot list box list box frame dot pack and here I'll provide the padding y equals to 10 now I need to create a scroll bar on this list box so how do we do that it's simple you just need to create another object scroll bar ttk dot scroll bar and then you will provide the object frame that you have just created now we need to pack this so self dot scroll bar dot pack and here I want to keep this on the right side so side equals to tk dot right and then I want to fill it tk dot y so what we have done here is this is a method call basically and this call packs the scroll bar widget into its parent container which is your list box frame so this side parameter basically holds multiple types of values we have already seen left and this is right which means that the scroll bar will be placed on the right side of the list box frame in this case it allows the scroll bar to be aligned vertically alongside the task list which is typically located on the left side now talking about fill this fill parameter controls how the widget should expand to fill the available space in the parent container and then this value tk.y means that the scroll bar will fill the vertical space of its parent container which is your list box frame this will allow the scroll bar to stretch from top to bottom of the list box frame making it easier to scroll through the list of tasks now we are done with scroll bar now what do we need we need a list box so this is the major thing so for this we will create another object tk dot list box and here we need to provide a lot of things so first is your frame so self dot list list box frame and then you need to provide height and width so I'm going to go with 10 and 40 then you need a font okay I did weight here instead of width so font I'm going to go with Helvetica so Helvetica and then the font size which is 12 now I need a scroll command because you want to scroll right if you have a list of tasks and you want to scroll uh, for this we will need a scroll command so here we need to provide the scroll bar on which you want to scroll on which you want to scroll basically and then set now for this set you need few properties so first is your active style which I want to keep as none you can have you can even choose a style here but I want to keep it simple then you want to if you want to have a background color you can have it so let's go with this which is your light gray background basically and then you want to if you want to highlight thickness then you can do that uh, for me I'm just going to go with zero here then the background that you want so I want to have a light blue background here so everything is all around coloring placement right that is how the application would look good then you select foreground and here I can simply say white now let's pack this so self dot task list box dot pack and this I want to keep on the left side side equals to tk dot left and then fill both horizontally and vertically and then config a command on this so self dot scroll bar dot command oh sorry config and here I would specify the command which is going to be self dot 
task list box dot y view now this is a very big configuration so let me summarize what we have done so this list box variable holds the list box widget which will be used to display the list of task now this line basically here what you have this line creates a new list box widget and then you have list box frame here the parent widget which you have already created where the list box will be placed which helps in organizing the layout now let's talk about all these parameters now height and width is mostly clear but uh, this is what but this just specifies the height and width of the list box in terms of the number of visible items right so whatever you define here keep that in mind that this is how it will show the initial capacity and then you can scroll over it then you have the font and then you have this y scroll command so this connects the vertical scroll bar which is your scroll bar to the list box whenever the user scrolls through the list box this command will update the scroll bar position accordingly now active style so this disables the default highlighting style for the active item in the list box when selected we will see this option as well to have more options then you have this background color and then highlight thickness which removes the border around the list box that indicates focus making it cleaner in appearance then you have select background and select foreground which is i don't i don't think um, we need to discuss now talking about packing here uh, i want to keep this list box to the left side of the parent container so that's why i have left uh, this basically tells the list box to expand uh, to fill both the horizontal and vertical space within the parent container this means the list box will stretch to occupy any additional space available in both dimensions now this command basically so this line configures the scroll bar command attribute and here we are linking the scroll bar to the vertical view of the list box this means that this 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 means that when the scroll bar is used to scroll it will adjust the view of the list box accordingly conversely when items in the list box are scrolled uh, via your mouse wheel or touchpad it will also update the scroll bar position because of the earlier y scroll command setting which we have here now let's change this active style from none to dot so this change will provide a clear virtual uh, indication when an item is selected making it easier for users to see which task they are interacting with now let's highlight now let's make highlight thickness as one this adds a thin border ar around the list box enhancing its appearance and making it stand out more on the screen also we can have highlight background as well so I have added the soft gray color here for the background and we are done now let's create buttons here for marking as completed and removing task so we will have action frame so ttk dot frame and root this is another row so that's why we are having separate frame now self dot action frame dot pack and here I'll do padding y equals to 10 as usual now for your complete button basically what do you need uh, you need a button ttk dot button and here you need to provide the frame so action frame then you, you need to provide the text so let's say mark as completed then you need to provide the command that needs to be executed on this so self dot mark completed so this method we have to create and then your style which is t button all right now let's pack this button so self dot complete button dot pack side equals to tk dot left and then padding goes to 10 now the another button which is going to be your 
remove button so here we would have almost same thing as we had here with some customization so here the text would be remove task the command would be remove task and then we simply have to pack so this was on the left side and so would be this and here we don't need padding that's okay and here let's do remove button instead of complete button now here we have created two buttons within a new frame and i think yeah we don't need to explain much here so that's it now for task we need our methods here so let's create with add task first this is long pending method so here we need a task object which we will get through your task entry and then we will first have some conditions so if task not equals to empty that is our first check if it is not empty in that case we will append the task otherwise i want to have a message box and here i would say show warning and input error please enter a task so the title would be input error and the message inside that box would be please enter a task right now if it is not empty in that case i want to append to the list so i have a task list dot append task and then i'll update task list box and then self dot task entry dot delete 0 comma tk dot end so now the summary part what we have done here so the very first thing is that we have appended the task so self dot task this is going to be a list that stores all the task in the application and uh, this check is going to be to check if the task that has been added using that add button is empty or not so this condition ensures that the user has entered some text before trying to add it to the task list now this update task list box so this calls the update task list box method which refreshes the list box display to include the newly added task it ensures that the ui reflects the current state of the task list so this we will create later now what we are doing here is we are this this line basically clears the input field after the task has been successfully added so that the user can insert again right so it deletes the text in the task entry widget from the first character to the end that is why you have zero to end so this effectively reset the input field for the next task now this we have already talked before so yeah so this is your add task similarly we would have more methods so now let's create remove task and mark completed so first goes your mark completed so here first is that you need the current selection right whatever you have selected that you want so i would say selected task index that i want to have and that i will get from task list box and here i will have a method which is your cursor selection and from it i would get the first index all right now completed task goes to self dot task this is your list that you have created here and here i will provide the index so that i can actually get the value 
then you need to update that value with completed right so for this you would need something like this so here you have two things one is this check which signifies that this current selection has been completed and this this is what you want to update in the list so you need to update the list using update task list box method all right in case something goes wrong if there is no index or something like this in that case i want to fetch this exception index error and i will have a message box which is going to show warning and it the title would be selection error and in the message body i would say please select a task to mark as completed so if the user doesn't provide any index in that case only this will fail right so what we are doing in this method uh, let me add a full stop here so talking about this line first we have this method curl selection this method returns a tuple of the indices of the currently selected items in the task list box so in this case it is expected to return a tuple with one index if a single task is selected so that is why we are only fetching the first index so this retrieves the first element of the tuple which is the index of the selected task if no task is selected this will raise an index error now keep that in mind we don't want to select multiple indexes at a time now this line basically accesses the task list using the index retrieved from the previous line it assigns the currently selected task to the variable completed task now here what we are doing is we want to update the selected task in the task list by prefixing it with a check mark and appending the text completed so if you're wondering about this uh, this is a f string or formatted string so this will allow for easy insertion of the completed task value into the new string otherwise you need to append and that is that is not a good looking code right now here we are calling the method which refreshes the list box to display the updated task list showing the task as completed already now this we have already discussed now let's add the method for removing task so remove task so here we will have another try catch because uh, there could be a scenario where the user has forgot to select the task right so this scenario will occur again so i'll copy this and instead of mark as completed i think the, the spelling is wrong all right now inside try what do we need we first need to fetch the selected task index so i can simply copy this okay i don't need the text here then because we have this list i can easily remove it using pop selected task index and then i just need to update so let's copy this line all right so this we have from the previous method so this we don't need to explain much and so is this and so is this now talking about this line what we are doing here is so the pop method is a built-in list method in python that removes an item at a specified index from the list so that index is this and it actually returns the item as well but we don't want to uh, print or anything so that's why i'm not fetching it into a variable and then when you remove it you have the updated list which you updated through here now the last method is your update task list box now one thing i forgot is to create uh, an empty list so let's do that self dot task goes to this all right now let's create a last method which is your def update task list box 
so here what do we need is first thing is that I want to get so this method basically is going to be responsible for ref refreshing the display of task in the list box widget and uh, this method ensures that the list box accurately reflects the current state so first thing first is that we need the task box to be deleted zero till and so this refreshes uh, to the list box widget where tasks are displayed so this dot delete method that we so this delete method that we have called here this method call removes all items currently in the list box and here zero indicates the starting index and then your end index so this is very important because it ensures that the list box does not retain any outdated or previously displayed task before updating it with the current task now for adding again to the list i will iterate over task and i'll use self dot task list box dot insert tk dot and comma task so what does this say so this insert method basically inserts a new item into the list box but here the tk dot end specifies that the item should be added at the end of the current list of items in the list box so that we have some order the task here represents the individual task that we want to insert to the list box all right so we are done with each and every method here so what do we need we need the main method now for the application call i would do something like this this is pretty much standard first thing first is that i need to create the root object so for this i would use tk.tk now i need to pass this root object to the constructor so app equals to to do app and root and then i can use main loop method which means that the application will keep on running till the user wants to close it all right now let's run it hopefully we don't see any error and we didn't see any error but one thing that i can see here is that i don't see the button to add task right so let's see what went wrong here all right so i think i'm missing some packing in this t button let me see so we have t label here we have t button then we have label we pack this and we have add button here okay so we forgot to add uh, the packing of this so that is what we have missing dot pack and the position is left i thought i did this dot left all right that's good let's run this all right so i see the button here i see the field here the scroll bar should be here so let's add some uh, task so let's say drink water work out netflix watch anime uh, what else uh, play f1 work on the code create a youtube video work on the udemy course study study drink 
protein shake and lastly let's say edit video all right so now you see scroll bar here right so that's good all right now what do i need is let's say i have drank the water already so for this i would say mark as completed and here you see check and completed here and let's say if i want to delete netflix from here so let's click on remove task and it's deleted now i haven't selected any indexes yet and if i try to do mark as completed i see selection error please select a task to mark as completed and same let's say i try for remove task i get please select a task to remove now i don't have anything added here and still let's say if i try to do add task so i get please enter a task so this looks good and this is it what i wanted to do in this so this is it for today i really hope that i was able to make you learn something new and you might have found something interesting if you did don't forget to subscribe and if you have any questions to let me know on the comment section and this is it for today i really hope that we will meet in some another video till then stay happy keep learning and subscribe to my channel